الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد as to what proceeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran وَالْأَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُصْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the time and he states that indeed mankind is in a state of loss. I would like to ask you brothers an important question. Probably the most important question anybody can ask you or you have ever been asked. What could be that question? Think about it. What is the most important question that any human being can be asked? That question is, what is the purpose of your existence? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create you? This body, this soul, the hands, the feet, the eyes, the ears that you possess. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you and give you all this? Or some people who go into reflection, in the state of reflecting and contemplating, they may ask this question, why are we here on planet Earth? Is there a difference between the human beings and the animals? The animals, their purpose of existence is to eat, drink, sleep, survive, and then finally die. No purpose, no objective for their existence. Is there a difference between the animals and the human beings? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers this question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran where he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا In Surah Al-Dhariyat, Ayah number 56, that I did not create the jinn and the ins except for my ibadah. That the only purpose, the real purpose, the primary objective of a human being is to establish the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else is secondary. <coughs> Eating, sleeping, drinking, earning halal risk, marrying, having children, enjoying. These are not the objectives of a Muslim, nor are they the objectives for mankind. As I mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that mankind is in a state of loss and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the exception except for those who believe in Allah and do righteous deeds. <coughs> so the purpose of our existence is al-ibad. 
making ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the purpose of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. It is for this reason we find that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as reported by a hadith by Imam Ibn Imajah in his sunnah and the narration is Sahih or Hassan bin Shawahid as mentioned by the Ahlul Ilm. The Umm Salama radiallahu anha narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every single day after Salat al-Fajr would make the following supplication, the following dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafiyah wa rizqan tayyibah wa amalan mutaqabbah. So the objective, the only the real objective, the goal of a Muslim or the goal of any human being is to establish the Tawheed or the Ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the daily objectives of a Muslim are three. The daily objectives of a Muslim are three and only three, not four, not two, but three. As they were determined by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the supplication after Salat al-Fajr. Ilm al beneficial knowledge. Rizq al good provisions. Amal al accepted deeds. If you look at any human being, from the time he gets up till he sleeps, his life revolves around these three things. From the time he gets up till he sleeps. You see, those who are the best of all people on the face of this earth, who seek beneficial knowledge, ilm al who study the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are, in the path of, who are in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the first thing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked. The second group of people are those who go out to look for their risk, sustenance. There is, that's why we find that most of us wake up in the morning to go to our jobs, to go to our businesses. But unfortunately, many Muslims, except for whom Allah has mercy, that when they go to look for their risk, the risk is not tayyib, it's haram. That they indulge and they engross in haram. So from the time they wake up till they return back at home, tired, exhausted, they have not benefited because the day has been spent in ma'asiyah, in sinning and displeasing and being disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing, for those who Allah has blessed, either with wealth and with health, who are free, who have free, free time in their hands, they do righteous deeds, they do deeds which are accepted. But unfortunately, many people who have this bounty are also tried. Rather than doing actions which are accepted by Allah, they practice innovations in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like celebrating the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa birthday and celebrating, celebrating Christmas, thinking that this is the day upon which Isa alayhi salam was born, which is incorrect, factually, even according to the Christians, Isa alayhi salam ala tahqiq was not born on the 25th of December. So going back to the main discussion of today, and that is Al-Tawheed, that the purpose of our existence is Al-Ibadah, and Al-Ibadah is Al-Tawheed. What makes us so different from Christians, Jews, Hindus, Sikhs, and all the other isms that may be present, is that the Muslims, those who say that they are Muslims, they believe in the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the Tawheed is that which makes us different from all the other faiths and makes us different from all the other sects in Islam. It is for this reason that on the face of this earth, 
from the east to the west. If there is any Muslim group that is upon the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that group is the Ahlul Hadith. Only the Ahlul Hadith. And I say this with conviction. That the Ahlul Hadith are those who establish the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the four corners of this earth. Also known as Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Because Hadith and Sunnah are synonymous for Taratif. Have the exact same meaning. So what is Tawheed? Respectful brothers, if somebody is to ask you this question, what is Tawheed? In order to understand Tawheed, there are three important issues. No Muslim can be upon the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless he understands, implements, practices the three issues which I will mention. So what is the first issue? The first issue is that a Muslim believes that Allah is unique in his actions. That Allah is the creator. Allah is the sustainer. Allah is the planner. Allah is the one who harms and benefits. Allah is the one who grants life and death. Allah is the one who gifted us with the faculty of hearing and seeing. And there is no associate or partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to his actions. Allah is unique in his actions. This is known as Tawheed al rububiyyah Singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his actions. Anybody that believes that there is somebody else other than Allah that can grant, that can harm or benefit, or he has the ability to do something that only is exclusive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his actions. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb. That's why in Surah Al-Fatiha, the first one of the first ayahs of Surah Al-Fatiha is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen that the Rabb is the Malik the Rabb is the Ma'bud that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique and Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْءَ وَالْأَبْصَارِ وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيِّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهِ وَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ So if you want to ask them who grants them this risk with a salah from the skies and from the earth and who is the one that has granted you the faculty of hearing and listening hearing and seeing and who is the one that brings back a lie from those who are dead and those who are dead he brings them back alive and indeed they will say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique in his actions is the first belief and the people of Makkah Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab they believed that there was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was unique in his actions. Allah was unique in his actions. As the ayah says, فَسَيَقُونَ اللَّهُ That if you ask Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab in regards to the Tawheed or Rububiyyah, they affirmed Tawheed or Rububiyyah. But by affirming Tawheed or Rububiyyah, by affirming that Allah is unique in his actions, this did not make the Muslims. So we find that the Christians and the Jews up to the extent that even some of the Hindus who have 33 million gods, they affirm some aspects of our Rububiyya for the one and only Creator. But this does not make them Muslims. So understand that Allah is unique in His actions. The second important issue which every single Muslim should believe in is that it is obligatory upon every single Muslim to sincerely 
make ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his or her actions without associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is known as Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed al-Uruhiyya. That yours and mine actions which are done on the basis of Ibadah are only done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah states in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ سَلَاتِ وَنَسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ وَرُبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِكَ لَا That say that my salah and that my sacrifice and that my living and my dying, all of this is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the Rabb of this alami, of this entire universe, without associating partners with him. So your fasting, your praying, your zakah, giving charity, your hajj, is only done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That your fear, those actions which are connected to the heart, your reliance, your fear, your hope is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those actions which are connected to your tongue, and when you seek assistance and when you are in need, you only call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do not call upon Abdul Qadir Jalani, a Khadr of Aydin Tishri. You only say, Ya Allah, you don't say, Ya Rasulullah, or Ya Ali, Ya Madad, or Ya Hussein, or Ya Ali. And the actions that you practice, that you do not make any intermediary between yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you ask, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. As Allah says, Udu'uni astajibakum. Wa qala rabbukum udu'uni astajibakum. That call upon your Rabb, he says, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer. Udu'uni, Allah says, call upon me, and I will answer your prayers. So there is no intermediaries between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the logic, and the rational arguments of saying that if you want to see a prime minister, you need to see the minister before you before you see the prime minister, then these arguments are all void and petty and foolish arguments which can be used for human beings. Not for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who is who is Malik al-Muluk, who is Shah, Shah, the King of all kings. So there is no partners when it comes to our actions when we do those actions on the base of Ibadah. And this, is what the, this was the purpose in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was sent. Every single messenger that came from Nuh Alayhi Salaam to Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their da'wah, their call, did not start in telling people to have good manners, telling people to stop smoking drugs, telling people to stop doing this. The first thing every Prophet and messenger called to he called to this aspect of Tawheed, which is not as Tawheed or Ibadah. And these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولًا أَنْ إِبْدُ اللَّهِ وَجْتَنِبُ التَّابُوتِ We sent to every single nation a messenger proclaiming أَنْ إِبْدُ اللَّهِ that make Ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and establish the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abstaining from worshipping, making ibadah of everything other than Allah. At-Tawood is kullu ma'ubida min dunillah. Everything that is worshipped other than Allah is a Tawood. This is the message which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. This is the da'wah which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started his da'wah and for 13 years in Mecca, except for the salah, nothing else became obligatory upon the Muslims. It took the Sahabas 13 years to understand Tawheed and today the Muslims don't want to give 13 minutes to understand this aspect of Tawheed. The Sahaba, the best of all, creation after the Prophet and the messengers from amongst mankind, it took them 13 years to understand Tawheed. And the da'wah of the Ahl al-Hadith starts with the da'wah of Tawheed and this aspect of Tawheed. If somebody believes that Allah is unique in his actions, but does not single out Allah in his or her actions when it comes to ibadah, then that person cannot be upon al-Islam. That person cannot be upon the way. Because those who believe in Allah, those who believe that only Allah can harm and benefit the likes of Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted the messenger of Allah and his companions to fight against such people. Who believed that if you ask them, that when they would embark upon their ships, 
فإذا ركبوا في الفلك دعوا الله مخلصين العدين. But when they embarked upon their ships, they would invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, alone. فلما نجاهم إلى البر and then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would save them and they would come to shore إلى البر إذا هم الشركون then they would return back to their ship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the state of many ignorant Muslims is worse today. That in the state of a calamity and a catastrophe, they abandon Allah and they go to the saints and they ask the saints for their graves. If the saints themselves are in need of Allah's mercy, how can they grant something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not permitted them? So this is the second most important issue, which is to single out all your actions, every single actions, your a'mal, your af'al, which you do on the basis of ibadah, they have to be sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the key to entering al Islam. And the one who does not single out his actions or her actions for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is not upon Islam. And in, in, and in reality, he is not a Muslim. And if he is not upon Tawheed, then he is upon shirk. And the opposite of Tawheed is a shirk. And shirk is the greatest sin. Shirk is the greatest sin any human being can commit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that he forgives shirk. He does not forgive shirk, but he forgives everything else. Inna Allah la yaghfiru ay yushrika bih wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li maisha. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive shirk, but he forgives everything other than that. Wa may yushrik billah and the one who Associate partners with Allah. فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah has made Jannah haram upon that person. وَمَعْوَاهُ النَّارِ And his final destination is the hellfire for eternity. So anybody who does shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept their actions. So if somebody commits shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's praying, he's fasting, his charity, his good work that he does for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as wudu is a condition for as-salam, al-tawheed is a condition for al-ibadah. The one who does not have tawheed, his ibadah is not accepted. The one who does not have wudu, his salah is not accepted. And the one who has, who is in a state of purification upon tahara, but some type of impurity comes onto his tahara, then his tahara becomes void. In the same way, if somebody is upon Tawheed and he associates partners with Allah, then all those actions that he did for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become void. So this was the second issue. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants all the Muslims here and everywhere else the ability to understand the issues of Tawheed as we, as we have covered two issues. Aqoolu qali hala astaghfirullah ali wa alikum wa lisayi wa muslimin wa astaghfirullah wa During the two khutbahs, I see many of the brothers that they raise their hands and make dua. This is not from the sunnah. This is against the sunnah. If you wish to make dua, then you are not to raise your hands. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Amma abad. The third issue, which is obligatory upon the Muslims to understand and to believe, with regards to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has beautiful names and the most perfect attributes in a manner which befits his majesty which is known as Tawheed al asmani wa sirat to sing aloud Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has beautiful names Allah says in the Quran وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدُعُوهُ بِهَا and that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the beautiful names so call upon him with those names with those beautiful names. So it is obligatory upon every single Muslim to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has beautiful names and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the most perfect, complete attributes in a manner which befits his majesty. So for example, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِقْرَامِ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِقْرَامِ That everything shall perish except for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that he created Adam alayhi salam with his two hands. So it is, upon, it is obligatory upon every single Muslim to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a face in a manner which befits his majesty. It is obligatory upon the Muslim to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands. He must affirm its wording and its meaning in a manner which befits his majesty. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in the Quran, he says, Ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa. That the Rahman, he rose above the throne. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne. Unlike this, all the other attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a Muslim, we must believe in them. We must affirm their wording, and we must affirm the wording and the meaning in a manner which befits His Majesty. But in order to understand the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are three important issues. Number one, we affirm for Allah what He affirms for Himself. Or that which has been affirmed by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without distorting its meaning, without explaining or changing its meaning, in, in fear that we may be resembling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the creation. The second issue is that we believe, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a, Ahlul Hadith believe that to resemble Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the creation is blasphemy, is kufr, is disbelief. It expels a person from the fall of Islam. So if anybody says that any of the attributes of Allah are like the attributes of a human being, that the hand of Allah is like the hand of a human being, the face of Allah is like the face of a human being, then this person has left the fall of Islam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that there is nothing like unto him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the whole, all hearing and all seeing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and sees. Everybody accepts this. But the hearing and seeing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like the hearing and the seeing of a human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. But the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like the mercy of a human being. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge. But the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like the knowledge of a human being. So if the knowledge of Allah is complete, if the mercy of Allah is complete, if the hearing and the seeing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete, then the face of Allah is complete. The hands of Allah are complete. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He rose above the throne and He separated from His creation in a manner which befits His majesty, this is also complete. The third issue is that we do not ask how with regards to the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we do not know the reality of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The human brain cannot perceive, cannot comprehend the reality of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when a man came to Imam Malik rahimahullah, Imam of Dawr al-Hijrah, and when he asked Imam Malik, Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa, he said, how did Allah rise above his throne? Imam Malik became angry. The complexion of his face changed, and he said, التَّعْرِيفُ مَعْرُوفٌ وَكَيْفِيَّةُ مَجْهُولٌ وَالْإِيمَانُ بِهِ وَاجِبٌ وَالسُّؤَالُ عَنْهُ عَلْبِدْعَةٌ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. But this is known in the Arabic language. التَّعْرِيفُ مَعْرُوفٌ We affirm its wording and its meaning. The kayfiyya of how? That this is unknown to the human being. He accepts and he submits. وَالْإِيمَانُ بِهِ وَاجِبٌ And it is wajib for him to believe. And to ask such petty and stupid questions, then this is an innovation in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Malik said that to, the, to his students, throw this man out of this masjid, for indeed he is an innovator. For indeed he is an innovator. And this was in the masjid of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the correct belief with regards to Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the Ahlul Hadith, with regards to the names and attributes of Allah, which is the third question, which is the third category of Tawheed, 
is that we affirm for Allah what he has affirmed for himself. Or that which has been affirmed by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Without liking Allah to the creation. Without asking how and without making ta'weelat. Without giving meanings or interpreting those attributes of Allah. Which Allah and Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not interpret or did not inform us. If a Muslim believes in these three issues, singles out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his actions, singles out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his or her actions on the basis of ibadah, and believes that Allah is unique in his names, beautiful names, and most perfect attributes, affirming, affirming them, not likening them, or not asking how, that he is upon the Tawheed of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is the da'wah which the Ahlul Hadith call to I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he unites the Muslim Ummah upon the Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he saves the Muslim Ummah from committing the most greatest of all sins which is the sin of Ash-Shirk أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين أقيموا بالسلام